it's not recording. Now no? it's recording. It says record. I just hit record. So you know what I think we do, Leslie? I'm not kidding. Reschedule? I'm going to fucking cry. Julie, I'm so sorry. I'm not. I don't care. I mean, I love you guys. Here's what I say we do. We say, <laughs> God damn it. We say, hi. It's really hot, by the way, when you're like this. Oh, thank you. We say, hi, it's the Leslie and Lisa show with our guest who's already here, Julie Bowen, because we just fucking talked for 45 minutes without recording. Welcome to the Leslie and Lisa show. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Leslie and Lisa show. You just saw our cold open. Things are a little different this time around because... We had decided to do a nighttime version of the Leslie and Lisa show with cocktails with our amazing guest, Julie Bowen. And, you know, sometimes things just don't exactly work out the way you think they're going to. Lisa? The thing is, Leslie, first of all, this was your idea. So congratulations. By the way, it's a brilliant idea. We just need not get drunk. Right. Or no. We could still get drunk if that's what we so choose to do. Uh -huh. But what we but what we've learned, we've made we made some mistakes, mistakes that we needed to make so that we know now not to make those mistakes again. Right. And we and hopefully we will we and by the way, it's me. I'm the one who made the mistakes. So hopefully I will never make those <laughs> mistakes again. But I will say it was an incredibly fun evening. Yep. We have edited the crap out of it because yep. had we not done that. You what would you, hate us. You would hate us. You would be watching. Well, you would probably choose to not watch two hours of drunken stupidity, <laughs> not all of which was fun and interesting. So we tried. By the way, to but let's admit, Lisa, drunk. Me, kind of drunk. Oh, okay. Julie, not so much. I don't think she, so. Or she really holds her liquor really well. Which um, she we, seems like the kind of gal that would. I know. Listen, we all did it. We we started the show off with a with a shot, and then we continued to drink a couple of cocktails throughout. And unfortunately, we had some mishaps, and we lost our Zoom. And then we came back, and we forgot to hit record. I and did. So I forgot. Lisa forgot to hit record. And so what you are going to see, so you're going to see a really edited down version of the Leslie and Lisa show. I like to call it the Leslie and Lisa shit show. Yes. Um, forgive us for some, at least forgive me. I find me so fucking annoying in the show because I don't shut up. Apparently when I get drunk or I have too much to drink, I don't shut up. Listen, I talk a lot anyways, which I'm doing right now. I, I found you very endearing, but let me say this. The gift that this show gave me, I will say, is I'm telling you in all honesty, in the time we were all talking, I thought we were so funny and smart. <laughs> and what this gave us was the gift of seeing us when we were sober, we were able to see ourselves drunk and realize, maybe not realize so when you're drunk at a party, you're not so friggin' interesting. No, it's yeah. not as funny as you think it is. Nope, but thank God we were all drunk, so we all thought we were hilarious. But by the way, but I'll have to say, uh, Julie was funny. Yes. Thank God. Not only Julie funny, Bowen. but what you will see is she was such a good sport. I, it's ridiculous. I don't know so, if I would have been that cool. No, and so you're going to watch this, and we're definitely going to do another show with her where we're pro we'll probably just sit and have coffee this time. Yeah, that's a very good Anyways, idea. We hope you enjoy the show. We had to at least open it up this way to let you know you're seeing a very edited down version with some fun little things to spice it up. Yep. With some fun little things to show you that we've skipped over for your behalf or <laughs> on your behalf. Um, anyways, uh, enjoy. Enjoy. And we hope that you'll subscribe and like and everything even after you see this. And anything else, Lace? That's it. That's Have a cocktail. It. Oh, yeah. Have, Have a, cocktail. a cocktail and sit and watch. And then, by the way, let us know what you think afterwards. Maybe we should do more shows drunk. Maybe oh. we should do them all drunk. <laughs> Enjoy. Thanks for joining us. And we forgot to record it. That's what we do. Let's just do it. Go. We're drunk. What? We had a whole plan. <laughs> just get ready. But we're going to record it. We're Jules, gonna... just, Jules, just stay right there. Ready? No, we're we're going right to repeat here. all of that, though. You want me to just do like, like. <laughs> oh 
I'm gonna I'm waiting. Just, just cue me in. <laughs> just give me my cue, and I'll be like, hey. Wait a minute. Wait, can I just say, we have literally thought we had been recording for a good 40 minutes. And yeah. the shit we talked about, I, I can't. I, I, There's I'm so too, much more, though. I'm There's too so drunk. much more. There's so much. I'm too drunk to even repeat any of Although, that. Although, I see so you didn't get, let me get to my full story. Because I started off on Cobra Kai. Okay. And Johnny Lawrence, who was played by Billy, Billy Zappa. Zappa. Billy Zappa. You want to so, date, and I'm going to find out because I went to high school with him. Even though he doesn't know me, he was a couple years old. Did he ahead. go to West Valley? Billy Zappa oh, went no. to school at Elkhart. Zappa. Yeah. Is it Zappa? Isn't it Zapka or is it Zappa? No, Zappa. it's Zappa. It's, Zappa. it's like um, it's like an Eastern European combo. Zappa. El Camino in in Woodland Hills is where we went to school. El Camino. El El Camino. El Camino. El El Camino. The front is for the You're all so drunk. The back looks hey, like people. a truck. What? There's there's so much. I, there's so much that everybody's missed out on, and now they're just catching us totally, completely shit faced. But that's it's okay. Fine. It's you fine. It's fine. It's El Camino, the car, which is amazing, which our principal drove in support of our school. That's so wow. on the nose. I, I know. It's I went to a school called St. George's, and St. George killed a dragon, but our headmaster did not drive a dragon. That's good. Okay, but no, wait. I don't, I'm, don't. Gonna, I'm gonna get us all back together. So hold on, Julie. You finish get ahead, hon. what you were gonna say. Oh my god, that was so Baltimore of you. But then we need to go back and talk about Ed and how you guys met and where you lived, and you have to pretend it's the first time you're talking about it. But what were you gonna say? Leslie and I met in 1998 in okay. New York City, and I was taken by her skill with the ombre lip. Sure. And she was warm and lovely and um, accepted everybody into her house. Yep. Every, every department from Ed was in your house at one point or another. And I'm going to, I'm going to lean heavily teamsters. on the Teamsters a lot. Usually, you, I mean, uh, Lisa knows this. Reapply, Lisa. You look I'm fabulous. doing ombre lip for you. I didn't there you go. The middle. But and, most people don't know that like, on a film set, there's a real hierarchy. And like the actors are sort of actors and directors and the above the line people. And they don't always mix and mingle with the, yeah. and I'm it really air quote, quoting it down, but like gaffers, grips, the real, the people who actually do all the hard work. Yep. Not Leslie. Leslie's house on the Upper West Side of Manhattan is an apartment that was fabulous. And she took me in when my apartment flooded. You would go over there any time of the day or night. And there was like Teamsters, grips, um, uh, sound guys, you name it. It was going off in her apartment. It was fantastic. She's a, she's an egalitarian woman of the people. <laughs> and, a, and a hostess with the mostess. Uh, Leslie, 2024. I've, you know, it's so funny because in my head, like she talks about all the teamsters and the grips and the whatever. And I'm like, they weren't all in my bedroom. They weren't. So but your bed, she did have a big cozy bed and there was a TV in your bedroom? There was. And I feel like Listen. like sometimes you would just end the evening. We would all sort of end the evening like in, in my bed, bed. watching something. Of course. Yeah. And by the way, I have a ton of girlfriends out there who are watching who are watching this right now going, well, we still end the evening in Leslie's bed. That's so <laughs> sweet. It Listen, really is. I, when Jules and I met, she at one time, at, at a certain point during our time in New York, she lived in uh, like a Laverne and Shirley apartment where you would just see the feet walk by. And um, we called it the troll hole. And the troll hole was flooded at one point. And so Jules moved in with me and we lived together for a little while. For how long? A couple know, months. A couple months. Yeah. A couple months. I don't remember how long it took them for them to dry out my troll hole. <laughs> oh, you and that, that, by the way, out of context would be a really bad thing to say. Yes, it would. They yes, had to dry would. out the troll hole. Not exactly. <laughs> oh, God. But we you ended months. up moving back. So you lived with Leslie for how long? A couple months. Couple months. I don't know. It was a couple months. And I think... I probably didn't move back into the troll, or maybe I did. I don't remember. I moved a lot. I she moved did. a lot. I was the yeah. only cast member of Ed who had an apartment from the start and stayed there the entire time. Well, we yours was dope. It, it was, was beautiful. It was yeah. dope. 
I yeah, had, it was really okay. good. You were, you were, you, and you always were game to have a party there. You were always really nice about it. You and always were. And I loved when you lived with me. Jules, okay, so here was the best. She was living with me and we'd lay in bed and we'd run our lines. It was so cute. We'd that's run our right. lines. That's right. That's right. And that's when I learned that Leslie only uses a plunger one time. And that's not to say she has a collection of plungers. It's like fresh wrapped, like saran wrapped plunger from hardware store. Now, Leslie. Right into the garbage. She's a neat freak and a germ freak. But Leslie, I'm not a neat freak on any level, but I am a, a germ freak. And when I have to plunge the toilet, I then take bleach and I kind of pour it over my plunger in the toilet. And then I- In the toilet. Again. Until everything smells like your eyeballs are, are tearing up. Exactly. And then yeah. I put the plunger back in its holder, but you refuse you to it in that. its holder in your house or outside? Yeah. Yes. In in my house. Yeah, like, gross. It's just, nope. You don't put it out in your plunger shed. I just, I just can't do it. So here's, here's the thing. Yes. Does that make me not so kind to the environment because I use a plunger and immediately put it in the trash? Yeah. yeah. You exactly. need a plunger made of bamboo because it's right, a renewable thankfully, source. Thankfully, I don't use a plunger very often. So that's she good. Needs, she needs a plunger made out of recycled diaphragms from the 80s. Absolutely. Because then it's reuse, renew, recycle. <laughs> exactly. And there's the perfect know, little ecosystem. All I keep like, thinking is all the shit we were, no pun intended, by the way, all the shit we were talking about pre what we're talking about right now during the show that wasn't being recorded there's ah, there's so much stuff Jules okay I don't even know where to go because I drank on behalf of my girlfriend Andrea I drank a shot of um what's this called fireball fireball, fireball. yep fireball I'm drinking, a, I'm drinking a vodka drink but I did have a shot of fireball because I've my- had a shot of this and a full drink you guys are working your way into the like what was the tub thumping song I take a whiskey drink I take I the vodka, vodka drink. drink oh yeah, yeah tub thumping with chubba wumba Yep. Oh, where'd Leslie go? She's gone. Oh, shit. Julie, I feel a little bit <laughs> like you are a curse on this show. In the <laughs> best like, maybe it was Chumbawamba. I mean, maybe it's just that was all the internet couldn't even handle it. It was like, not this too. Plungers and Chumbawamba were out. <laughs> is she gonna come back? Let's talk about Where is she? Until she comes back. Hold on, wait. Look for look for her in the waiting room. I am. But what did you think of Leslie when you first met her? Let, just tell me that before she She seemed back. so together and I was so impressed. Her hair was always done. She was always like, had a fresh blowout and perfect makeup. She was always dressed to the nines. She had a toe ring. I don't know if she still <gasps> does it. I don't think she does, but she's still she always a, perfect. Yeah, she's always turned the hell out she was always um really put together and crazy crazy talented would also we could talk about her behind your back yeah she would also always stand up for everybody who was too busy being like well it's okay i'll work until 4 a.m in in my, in my underwear outside she's like like fuck you will that's not what the union said and that's not what we're doing and i was like yeah, she was oh awesome. that's amazing she got us air conditioning we didn't have AC. We were shooting in New Jersey in an old, uh, like in a, a bowling, bowling alley. alley. Yeah, but it was like a family fun center that was like batting cages. And it's August, and we had lights, and they were not LED lights. They were like, you know, surface of the sun scorchers. And uh, some people were fainting. There was <gasps> some fainting. And Leslie was like, unacceptable. And said the thing that no one else was willing to say. Oh, I saw her. <laughs> you got to unmute yourself. Now you're muted. You're muted. Oh my God, with her fantastic white snake hair right now. It's amazing. Wow. You on your phone? No, no. Now on my iPad. My you got it turned the wrong way. You have to turn it. I don't want to turn it. Oh. All right. Okay. Uh, yay. Leslie's back. We talked about how great you were and how you were responsible for getting us air conditioning on Ed when no one else would stand up for it. And you were like, unacceptable. People are fainting. And All right. I can't do this. Like, Leslie, I what happened to your computer? My computer died. Because <laughs> Is that what happened? 
Did you forget to charge your computer too? I was fully charged and then it died. It literally just died. I think because we've been on Zoom for so fucking long. Here's the thing. If for some reason we can pull this shit together, I don't think we can. Oh, we yes, we can. This is the show. Leslie. This is gold. This, this is gold. I'm dying right now. I'm dying. First of all, oh my God, this whole night is a disaster. And Julie, you're the fucking best ever. Listen, Jules, tell us about any interesting, obviously pre-marriage or post, any interesting famous people that you've dated? I can think of a few. Any interesting things, people that you've dated is what you just Things asked. and people. Um, Did I say things? Yeah. Any I, interesting things, people? I don't know. That, have I, I mean, I dated David Spade, who's like a lovely okay. person. He's the For nicest how long? guy. I chose For a, a year and change. I, I don't know. A year, I was going to say a year and change. So here's the thing. Spade, a year and change. Come, Spade used to come visit us on the set. I will say this. Spade and Julie Spade. used to text with each other. Before, before there was texting. texting. Before there was texting. What does that mean? We had like Skytel pagers, you know, with the buttons. And so you could text underneath the, underneath like the desk. You could text in the middle of the scene. He, he, he was the first, he was an early adopter of the texting. And he's it, great. He's, he's lovely. I adore so him. So lovely. But not, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't looking for the same things that I was. Got it. But, and I will tell you, so Jules and I, when we were doing it, Jules and I shared a trailer. It was called the Two Banger. So she had a trailer and I had a trailer. Um, and, and they were she, attached, but they're attached. But they're like right. by they a wall. Attached. And so Jules Spade would come to set or whatever. I literally would be like, and I would say to Julie, babe, do you ever like feel like you're sleeping with your brother or your cousin? Yeah. Because you guys look like. You look like brother and sister. Absolutely. And I know. Weird I know. Way. And I used to try and steal his clothes because he had some really good clothes. But it, it, I mean, we were very similar in size, but it, it never quite worked. He's he's a great he's guy. He's amazing. He's right? a lovely, lovely guy. He's got a beautiful daughter. He's a great guy. He loves his mama. He's a good. He's a he's a good boy. And I have nothing but good things to say about him. Good. But, All right. Uh, what well. other famous people have you dated? Ah. Uh, I can uh, think of a couple, but I ain't saying nothing. I dated one guy who is well known, but I won't say his name. Okay. Who was um, from hell and was the king of the gaslighters. Oh. And literally one night, day, we, we woke up and it was like Sunday morning, Saturday morning, and we're in his bed and his phone rings and he goes, Oh, it's my ex girlfriend. Hello? And I was like, what do I do? What do I do? And I'm like, uh huh. Uh huh. And I'm like scrambling around and I can't find my underwear. And I'm like, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to hit it. And he's like, <laughs> and I leave and I'm like, with no underwear, I mean, pants, no underwear. And he calls later and goes, nice move, leaving your underwear so you have to come back. And I was like, you're, you're fucking insane. You, you literally took a call after making a face at the phone from your ex-girlfriend. What, we we what did we call him? We called him something. We had a name for him. We, so we can't didn't say it's too close to his actual name. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I, know, okay. I know. I know. I know. We had, we had a bunch of names for him, but they were all riffs on his name. But the bottom line was he was, um, he was demon spawn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he was demon spawn. You... You have three boys. You were married for how long? That's a really good question. Thank you. I mean, I you should know. You, you should know married. that I should know this. But the thing you I got, got out about getting divorced. You got I got married in 2004. But what I don't know is when I got divorced. You got divorced I know that years ago. I moved into this house three years ago today. Oh. Today, yes. Because it's oh, my wow. ex's Have birthday. It's Scott's house. birthday today. Happy and anniversary. Happy hi anniversary. House. Um, I had to move out. The only time I could move out was happened to be at the time on his birthday. And we were trying to keep it nice and civil and everything else. And I was like, it was just the only day I, did, I wasn't working and I could get the movers. And I was like, this is just, uh, this is the worst thing. I'm really sorry. But um, I just made him a 
I made him potatoes au gratin. Oh, I dropped them off at his house birthday birthday today. today. It's his, it's birthday, his birthday, birthday today, today. right? Yes. Listen, Jules is ex. Scotty, Scotty's a good guy. And he gave you three amazing boys. He did. Right? He did. And the kids well, adore him. I have to say, I saw a post the other day about you and Halloween and what a good dad your ex is. And I thought that was the sweetest friggin' thing ever. He, do, he goes all the way on Halloween in costumes and like he can, has a very dry sense of humor, but all of a sudden he'll answer the door in like a full squirrel outfit. And you're like, okay. I mean, there's a reason I married him. Sure. Obviously we weren't meant forever, but you know, Leslie, you're divorced. Like there's, you can't, I don't know what anybody can say Wait. unless they married, unless they married Hugh Grant. Right. In the undoing and then found out that he was a total psychopath. Um, that he, there's a reason why you got married and you can't, you can't eradicate you can't. that. You've you got to, you've got to, you have some kind of relationship because you have kids together. Yeah. Wait, let me just speak to this. So Jules and I, while we were doing Ed, my ex-husband Larry came up with a very brilliant way to propose to me on the show. Everyone. Created a whole scene that was to be shot on the show. And it turns out it really wasn't a scene in the show. It was just his way of proposing to me. But so anyways, he brings the entire set to work that day. All the actors, including me. I don't know why everybody poked me that day. Like everybody was trying to irritate me and it's not hard to irritate me. No, it's and not. <laughs> so, but here's all I know. Here's what's brilliant. And I have no idea, by the way, how the sound is. And I get that I'm not in horizontal. By the way, my picture is awful. This is the Anyways, so Larry, so Larry creates this entire scene. We're shooting this entire scene with this guest actor who comes in to ask me a question, etc., etc. Turns out the whole thing is absolutely planned by Larry in a scene. When we go to actually shoot the scene, Larry walks into the scene and all of a sudden gets down on one knee and is asking me to marry him. And I am like this the whole time. There's video of the whole thing because we were being we were being filmed. And there's me and going like, we are all mic'd too. Keep it. And I'm like this. Say that Larry I'm worked on the, the show. Yeah. What? We should Larry say that. Yes, my ex-husband worked on Ed, and I'm like this the whole time. And, and I'm in the all, background. And I'm all I head. hear behind me is somebody hyperventilating. <laughs> <laughs> I was hyperventilating. I love a good engagement. I love a good wedding. I was like, <laughs> I could barely keep it together. I was a mess. And then when I we saw it later, when he like cut it together and stuff, I was like, Oh, that sound is me. I'm sorry. I'm so you sorry. Hear it on the video. Yeah. Because you hear us. You hear him. We're all mic'd. You hear him saying, "I, you know, I want to spend the rest of my life together with you." And all you hear in the background is this. <laughs> oh my god! I, know. I didn't realize. I thought they could like over at the soundboard, like switch it out or something. I, I, I oh. Now, Sorry let me ask that. this. So first of all, Julie and I were both bridesmaids in your wedding. You were the my hottest house. outdoor day I have spent in quite some time. It was Ever. at my brother's house in his backyard. And it was 108. It was very warm. But, oh shit, I forget my question because I've been drinking. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know what way. you say. So I, I have a picture. I want to ask you both a question. Yeah. So I've been married for a little over 20 years. Dude, Leslie, we can't ever drink and shoot a show again. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay, I've been married a little over 20 years, and I know how I felt on my wedding day. I want to ask you both a question, and I, don't, I hope you can be honest. Did you know when you were walking down the aisle, this might not be the best decision, or did you believe with all your heart that day that that was going to be forever? My wedding was so much chaos. It was in the middle of Hurricane Ivan. Where? And the power had gone out in East Long Island. Island. Okay. And it was in the middle of a hurricane. And we literally had to set up for inside and outside. And there was this sense of like, hurry, hurry, hurry. Do it, just break to the clouds. Oh no, the power's out. Uh, that it just felt like, just get down the aisle. Say the stuff, get out of here. It didn't, it didn't feel as like, it didn't feel as like a big a moment. I felt like the big moment was when my ex-husband asked me to marry him. That was a very personal, lovely moment. And that was like, you know, when I was like, oh my God, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Like that was the big moment. The okay. actual wedding felt like you're throwing a party and you just really want to make sure it doesn't dump rain on your head. Okay. Um, that but was, by the way, it was a, it was a beautiful wedding. I mean, beautiful. Well, I'm not surprised. 
Well, I mean, I, I didn't want it to be. And what about you, Leslie? When you, I remember you walking down the aisle. Well, because I was a, first of all, I was so emotional because my dad wasn't there to right. see us get married. So I was emotional. But I will say the crazy thing was, you're right. Both of you, you were my bridesmaids. Wait, look at this picture I found. <gasps> oh, oh my God, we're next to each other. Oh, I really should have powdered. The words. Okay. Horrible. So, you're both, so you were two of my, how many bridesmaids did I have? 14, 30. 12, a thousand. <laughs> okay, so anyways, because the truth be told, you girl, the 14 bridesmaids, you're all still in my life. You're so important to me. Ex-husband's out. It's and like, do you no. see yourself ever getting married again? Ever being no, 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 no. I see myself becoming like I don't. I'm not a cat person, but I'm almost a crazy cat lady. Like, have you ever done one of those enneagram tests? Those personality tests. It's like E N I N whatever. So last week, and my sister and some other relatives, we all tested, and and we all um were together, and. She said, oh, somebody brought these Enneagram tests. It's this, th you, they asked you all these questions. Like, I think I get nervous when people are talking about me. The only reason to be alive is for children. Like, there's all these things that you go like, yes, no, maybe. Those okay. are all the choices. And there are nine different personality types. And I was like, oh, it's maybe it's, it's like a Zodiac thing. Like, they're all even, just different. And everybody's taking them. And everybody else was a two. And I was like, Okay, well, that doesn't seem very high. And then I was like, oh no, it doesn't matter. It's just, yeah. And actually, I don't know, I was six and I was like, <laughs> thank you. And it turns out that one is like a saint and an angel and nine is a sociopath. <laughs> and I was a six and it was like, you're suspicious. You're gonna be, a, you like being alone. You have, you, you don't trust anyone. And I was like, oh my God, that's me. Is and it I was true? Was it right? <laughs> Eh. She's not going to be mean, alone. She's not. I do. I do, need, okay. I do need alone time. But I don't want, it's like, I don't want to die alone. No. You know, like I love my friends and I love my kids. Um, and I can't wait to see them, but I absolutely need some alone time. But no, but I was like, I thought this wasn't on a scale of like, good. And I was, I was definitely up wow. there. Wow. Yeah. So I suck. Hey, Jules, we're approaching the new year, and this probably, I don't know if this show will post, because Lisa and I have so many guests. It's unbelievable. So many. And, and do you anyway, record them, or do you not record we them? We usually well, record them. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I'll tell you this. There's no other show like this one. No. No, there's not. The biggest, no. Shit show of a Leslie and Lisa show that ever been. So, and yet with like a guest that is so delicious, but it well, was we're all perfect. friends. Who cares? Okay, so oh, no, we're all friends. This has New been Year, the New best Year. night ever. But this will probably either air just before New Year's or after New or Year's. Or just after. Either way, hey, Jules, do you have anything like 2020 has been the craziest fucking year of every single human being's life? across mm -hmm. the board so mm -hmm. is there is is there anything you want to resolute to in 2021 it's hard to think about i think i might have to get over my fear of buying a sex toy <gasps> oh, my oh my god have you never or have you just not since you, you've never bought a sex toy i just i feel like I know that's totally fine and it's normal and it's healthy and it's legal and there's nothing wrong with it but i just i, I just can't do you know how many sex toys I have? Do you know how many times we've had this conversation? How many sex toys? Oh, yes. Have, oh, you have had this conversation many times. But usually I'm going. Mm -hmm. Listen, it feels <laughs> like it's scary. I don't know why. I just feel like it's the same with getting, like, when you had to get a card, like, fit, when we got kind of legal and then you have the card. I'm like, when the revolution comes, I feel like they're going to kill all the people that went to the sex shop and the weed store. Oh my God, you're totally like, you're envisioning Handmaid's Tale and <laughs> I am, I yes, am, are. even though no politics, but I am envisioning the Handmaid's Tale in a weird way. Like they go like, oh, 
Where did she go? Where did she go? You I'm went back. away from it. I'm back. Okay. okay. Sorry. Wait. Because I'm Julie. on my iPad, I'm getting tons of texts, so I had to like put it on airplane. Oh. Okay. okay. So Julie, you're saying that you will be punished for getting a vibrator? I I I I have a fear. Look, we're not going to get political. I understand, but free speech and all these things that we love and protect and but most of all power in the is in the hands of the people that we want in power is great but imagine if you will a land where i said this to my kids the other day i was like let's pretend and i made a magic situation i was like let's pretend sisu my mother had an abortion they were like what you know, she didn't that's why we're saying this and i said but she's very pro choice and she gives money to pro choice causes what if there was a moment, and it's not that crazy to think about, where that became illegal, and then in a Handmaid's Tale kind of way, retroactively illegal, or you got put on some list because you gave money to Planned Parenthood or something like that. Uh, I don't know. It just, okay. it just so can I just say, first of all, we don't have to worry because because we just don't, because we're not getting political. But if we're talking about this, if we're talking about sex toys and Handmaid's Tale and where we're going, I'm fucking dead then. I'm being hung in the middle of the square where everybody sees Just me. Leslie sweet. By the way, Leslie, when they're making me throw rocks at you, I will be crying. When, but when let me say this. <laughs> why if I'm sorry about the dildo. I'm sorry, I'm about, sorry about the dildo. I'm sorry. Sorry. It wasn't until I moved into this house and the mover said, handed me a box like bigger than a shoe box, like a boot size, like you buy a nice pair of boots. Sure. And they go, this is your private box. <laughs> because they were, they were helping like pack up every single thing. They were those kind of movers like, and they were like, you will put anything private in this box and we are gonna tape it up and we'll move it, but we don't open it. And I was like, like underwear? And they were like, no. And I'm like, private. what do you mean like drugs? And they were like, sex toys. And I was like, oh, you mean this is so standard, like that you have a box. You have a box. Oh, yes. Julie has a box she shook with nothing in it. Wait, I, was nothing. Of which, I was like, wait, huh? I think I'm just... behind the times. Totally. Jules, remember? So listen, Julie and I lived in New York. We shot Ed. We moved back to LA. Jules and Scott were together already, and they bought a house in Laurel Canyon. Sure. Um, beautiful home. Um, but this in this beautiful home, they apparently I forgot used this. To <laughs> they I used forgot to shoot. this. <laughs> they are it, they used to shoot the couple that lived there who I adored. Well, it was a gay couple who shot gay porn at the house, like legit gay porn, and they had all these DVDs. They gave us a full set of their DVDs as a housewarming gift, but they also left on the shower. <laughs> and, and by the way, it was an immaculate, gorgeous house. And the shower Beautiful. was all glass. They left a... Uh, it was like a, a... Like, it was like an a... An attachment. You know, an attachment. Like, you know, you're in a shower and there's like a... An, a like a, like a hand shower head. Sure. Right. But this, but this was a shower head that was in the shape of a penis with a million little holes that wash. I, I, I was like, do you use it to wash? And once we realized what it was, and then we... I couldn't even get it off. Could not get it off. Wrenches, everything. We we're like, what do we do? If we were Leslie, we would have thrown the shower out. I'm just saying. <laughs> but here's the thing. What I love that those 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 men, the couple that had that house, they literally left behind a full box of all the porn that had been shot in that house. Oh, that's amazing. We had Duke Miller's TV. Lumberjack Gangbang. But let me tell you, what does Julie do with the DVDs? She brings them to my house and she goes, I did. Yes, I <laughs> have you did. I there's all these I DVDs. It's all male porn. I don't just you know, it's okay. Here, here's oh, here, you can have it. And I was like, God. okay. I don't even remember I didn't even remember. It was a great house. And, it was I, and a great nobody house. wanted to I think people were scared of it because you know, it, it, it had a history and I'm like, I ain't scared. But I was a little scared that the shower was a little progressive. But you redid the shower. You re 
She demolished the shower and rebuilt a whole new shower. We, and we did lots of we did lots of redos on that house in general, yeah. but it was it was a lovely house. Jules, remember when we were earlier in the summer when we were supposed to have an Ed reunion on that show to benefit the Actors Fund, and then all yes. the is Julie agreeing to doing the Ed reunion on our? Yeah, show? I do it. Of course, I have no. Hey, Jules, listen. We I would I would venture to guess that Howard Stern is probably the your most favorite interview you've ever done, right? You love Howard. No? He wrote me an apology letter. <gasps> right? <laughs> because, oh, because Fred, um, you know, Fred, Baba Baba Baba. Answer, Fred came after me, like, was, was determined to take me down. He's like, you went to Brown and you think you're so smart, but you're not. And I was like, I'm way more worried about Howard Stern talking about my vagina than I am about whether or not Fred thinks I'm smart. So I was completely blindsided and we we're playing some trivia game and it had a clock on it. I didn't even know. I lost the trivia game. I'm like, I don't care as long as we're not talking about like, you know. My vagina. Right, like the rusty trombone or something. And Fred's like, ha, you, 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 you think you're so smart. You're not, you're not smart at all. You lost. And I was like, what happened? And the, the show was over and they, they wrote me an apology letter and then said, me, give me a special like award for being the most abused guest that year. <gasps> okay, well, we just got that. Okay. But I've Kimmel, been abused. You know Where is my Kimmel? award? Listen to me. Kimmel loves you and you love Jimmy, right? I love Jimmy. You love Jimmy. But listen, you're, because the Leslie and Lisa shit show is, uh, we're just like fucking ground level, but we will hope that you will go on your social media and plug this Leslie and Lisa shit show where we're all drunk. Was this fun and for you, I think, is what Leslie was trying to ask? Next to, next to Kimmel and Howard Stern, it might be the most fun you've ever had, right? This was, this was a lot of fun all the times that we did it. <laughs> Julie, we love you. I'm so fucking sorry that the first 45 minutes were not recorded. I totally take responsibility. I'm just going to say this. Forget about the first 45 minutes that were recorded. The first 30 minutes prior to that also didn't work because your fucking internet went out. I don't know what happened. Julie, what? Were you recording that one? Were you recording that one? Yeah. No, we haven't recorded anything until now, but what is your final statement? My final statement is, I'm going out the way I came in. <laughs> okay, but you have to let yourself out. Oh, wait, can I let her out? Hold on, more. Yes, she has to leave on her own. Put in waiting room, watch. Put in waiting room. She's gone. She truly is. Holy crap, I'm so on the Jolie Bowen train right now. It's ridiculous. I love you. I told you. I Thank love you. you for tuning into the Liz, Leslie and Lisa Shisha. We'll see you next time. Wait, don't tell everybody to subscribe and all of that kind of shit. This will go down in history as the best Lisa and Leslie show we have ever shot. And heck, we've only been doing this for like six weeks. I know. Okay. So, My glasses listen. fell. But please like the show. Subscribe. Subscribe and like and uh, be a part of our community. Listen, we're we're good girls. Leslie totally made me <laughs> More than anything, this is real life. This is what it's like. We did a Saturday night show. We decided to record on a Saturday night with Julie Bowen, and she fucking rocked it. Lisa Cushel, oh. I love you. I'm I, I just want to leave. Okay, I wanna go. Leave. I just want to leave. Go I love you. you. Like, subscribe. We love you. Be a part of our community, and uh, we'll see you next Stop time. Stop recording. Bye. Stop.